First, he laid down a foundation and not able to finish. All who see began to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going to make a war against another king that not sit down first and consider whether he is able to, with 10,000, to meet him who comes to him against him with 20,000? Or else, why the other is still on the way, he sent his delegation and asked for a condition of peace. So likewise, whoever of you does not forsake yourself, all that he has cannot be my disciple. So this is a message that's telling us that if we decide to do this, there's a cost involved. We know that, right? Thank you, Mike. I don't know, you might lose your friend in the process. You might lose your family member in the process. Are you okay with that? You might lose the earthly thing in the process. Are you okay with that? Your family might hate you, might forsake you. This is a cause of following Jesus Christ. Imagine if you're in a soldier, if you're a soldier and you're in the battlefield, right? You're in the battlefield and you have a bullet flying all over your head and a thing that kind of blew up, they call a bomb. You know, you ran back to your commanding officer and he's like, she's shooting at me. And they have things blowing up. They try to kill me. So what's your commanding officer gonna tell you? So what do you think? You sign up for this. You sign up to be in the war. You think they're going to come and give you Starbucks? Definitely not. Folks, we don't just start, you know, this Christianity things and quit after big trouble comes. The Bible doesn't promise good things, easy things, and prosperity. My Bible said that I'll struggle just like Christ did. We heard last week that we will have trials in life. True? And with trials come what? What? Well, at least you listened to Pastor Peter last week. We also have a Bible study last week and this week. This is the last week about the war room. Whether you know it or not, we are engaging in a spiritual warfare. In the movie War Room, there are five discipleship lesson that I gather. One, discipleship is intentional. Two, discipleship is focused on personal growth. Three, discipleship equips another disciple with practical strategies. Four, discipleship requires maturity, not perfection. Five, discipleship is duplicate. Second Timothy 2, one to two. As a follower of Christ and a soldier of Jesus Christ, I, I hope that you are a soldier, you either go forward with Christ or you'll be left behind. With some, you know, Satan is shooting at you. You'll have bullets flying over your head daily, and I say daily. And you'll hit landmine, right? We learned about that. You guys, you know, we have people who come to church and say, and complain about this, that, and whatever. We're at war here. Jesus really emphasizes that you understand this. And then when you carry the cross, you don't say the cross is heavy. It's supposed to be heavy. You don't get nailed and say, ow, that hurt. Nail is supposed to hurt you. And then, Jesus finished with this. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is neither fit for the land nor for the dunghill, but man throw it out. He who has ear to hear, let him hear. So let me rephrase it. Fish sauce is good, but if fish sauce lose its flavor, what good is it? What do you do with the battle of 
tasteless fish sauce. What would your fried fried rice taste like without good fish sauce? There's a lot of you know bad fish sauce out there. So get this: if salt has lost its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is neither fit for a lamb or for a dunghill. You know what a dunghill is? What is it, Brian? It's manure. Manure, pile of poop, yes. pile of crap. So NIV translation is pile of manure. Basically, if a pile of poop, you know, imagine if your work is solved and poop saying to you said, I don't even want you. Poop said, I don't even want you. Who would want you? Rejected by poop. Rejected by poop. <laughs> Jesus saying, look, you may be another body of salt, but you don't have the flavor to go all the way with me. Pick up and die with me. Go into war and know that you'll die with me. Or build a tower and go all the way with me. What use do I have for you? I don't know what to do with you. I can't throw you into dirt. I can't even throw you into poop. Poop doesn't even want you. Are you a word that's salt? Are you a Christian that walks around and, let me show you this. Big pile of useless white powder. Who would want you? You can't, you're not even good for poop. You ruin poop. Friends, let us re-examine our salt. Are you the saltiest, tastiest fish sauce, or you a worthless pile of white powder? I want to read from a, a book called Cause of Discipleship by Dietrich Bonhoeffer. This guy um, died in a concentration camp. Such grace is costly because it calls us to follow. It is grace because it calls us to follow Jesus Christ. It is costly because it costs a man his life. It is grace because it gives a man that only true life. It is costly because it condemns sin. And grace because it justifies the sinner. And above all, it is costly because it costs God the life of his son. He were brought at a price. And what has cost God much cannot be cheap for us. Above all, it is grace because God did not reckon his son too dear a price to pay for our life, but deliver him up for us. Costly grace is the incarnation of God. Folks, I don't know if you're a fan of Jesus Christ or you're his disciple. Either way, it doesn't matter. If you have sinned in your life, if you have done bad things this past week, and today you want his forgiveness, and today you have a desire to be his disciple, if you want to rededicate your life to be his disciple, would you please pray with me? Lord Jesus Christ, I am a sinner. I have done wrong against your commands. I am not worthy of your kingdom. However, Lord, I am ready to follow you all the way. I am ready to denounce all the things that I have and all that I am. Would you come into my life and make me your disciple? Amen.